grace, we want to thank you for heeding to an invitation to come and worship God together. And before we even begin with our message for tonight, I want us to pause for a word of prayer. Gracious, kind and heavenly Father, we thank you for affording us an opportunity to sit and bask at the sun of righteousness. You know our needs. You even know the temperatures of our spirituality. And tonight we pray that at your invitation and as we are coming, heaven may do to us and in us as heaven wishes. In your name and for your sake, we do humbly pray. Amen. Tonight we want to make use of a well-known text. It's Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. Revelation chapter 14, verse 7. Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the spring of waters. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. May you be present as we are absent. So that as you appear in our midst this evening, men may disappear. In your name and for your sake, we do humbly pray. Amen. The text we have just read in the book of Revelation stands between chapter 13 and chapter 15. In chapter 13, addresses the pressures of the last time. The pressures that will be extended by powers of evil towards those who call themselves by the name of the Lord. Great trouble, great time of trouble is coming. That is according to chapter 13. Because the powers of darkness will consolidate, they will come together. It's a spiritual triumvirate consisting of the beast, uh, consisting of um, the state that supports the beast, as well as a spiritual um, force that supports the beast. That's the three unholy trinity. Yet in chapter 15, the Bible says, in spite of the pressure, heaven has the last word because there will be a great harvest. There will be a great harvest. God will come through for his people. He will come and rescue them from the power of an unholy trinity and he will take them up to heaven. But between the time of trouble and the time of harvest, there is a church which is identified as a remnant that is given a specific message. It is a threefold message that is represented by three angels. And the text we just read this evening is a message of the first angel, by the way. In the Bible, message, uh, uh, angels are messengers. Messengers carry a specific message. But the message itself does not come from the messenger. The messenger is simply a means of communication between the giver of the message and the recipient of the message. And so God is the giver of the message. He is giving it to his people who live in the end times. 
that they may proclaim the message to people who live in the end times and they do not know the Lord. And so the church stands as a messenger between God who is the giver of the message as well as God's people who are the recipients of the message. And according to the message of the first angel, it gives a specific message. It is calling us to a devotional life, particularly in the end times. And it says, fear God and give glory to him. That's the first part of the message. The second part, it says, it gives the reason why we need to fear God and give him glory. It says, because the hour of his judgment has come. And it tells us, what should we do? So what should we do? We need to worship him who is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and the spring of waters. Let us look at this message more closely. So the Bible says, it, it, it is inviting us to fear God and give him glory. Fear God and give him glory. But what does it mean when it says we need to fear God? Does it mean we need to be afraid of God that we run away? If we are afraid of God to a point of running away from him, then the purpose of this message is defeated. But that's not the message. The message says, revere, show respect to the Lord. Understand that you are a product and he is a maker. So when we fear God, it means we allow him to take his rightful position in our lives. We understand that we are creatures and he is a creator. We understand that there is no way in which the creator may take instructions from his creatures, but that it is only his creatures that may take instructions from their creator. Fear God. Fear God suggests that we must prioritize him, that he must be our priority. When God is our priority, God comes first. When God is our priority, each day when we rise up, God comes first. When we go down to bed, God becomes the last one. So he has the first word and the last word. But not only that, not only that, but fearing God also suggests that even as we go through our trouble, we must take a clue from God and we must follow him and follow his instructions in spite of our trouble. You see, trouble has a way of revealing character. When things are fine, people act normal. When things are going well, people have a way of acting normal. But when things get bad, then character is revealed. It is only as we go through bad times that we begin to show and demonstrate our real selves. You know, you should never get excited when someone says to you, I love you. Oh, being loved is quite a good thing. Who doesn't want to be loved? Don't you want to be loved? But let me tell you, love does not make sense when things go well. 
When there are no challenges, love doesn't make sense. But when a person says, I love you, he means when things go wrong, I will be the last man standing and I will be standing by your side. I know that things are going well now, but when things go bad, I will be standing by your side and I will be the last man standing. All others may leave you except me. Now, I'm asking you a question this evening. As you are going through difficulties of your life, some of them are a result of your wrongdoing. Some of them are come as a result of living uh, alongside evil people. Some of these difficulties are a result of the very fact that we live in the world of evil. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what is the cause and the source of your difficult times. What matters is, who do you prioritize? Do you prioritize your problem? Do you spend much of your time thinking about your problem rather than thinking about God? And that's what it means to fear God. And then it says, give glory to him. Give glory to him. You see, in the original language, the word glory, the noun glory, it means weight. So when you give glory to God, it means God has a weight. His value in your life is great. He has, he's of such a great value that he comes first. So here, yeah, the text says we must honor God. We must respect God. We must take instructions from God, but also that God should have weight in our lives. If we are a scale, if we are a scale, and God is standing on our right side and difficulties are on the left side. The question is, the scale will tilt on which side? On the right hand side, the side of God. God has weight. If God is on the right and God is on the right, and difficulties are on the left. Does your scale tilt towards the right, suggesting that God has weight in your, in, your, in your life? Or does it tilt towards the left, suggesting that troubles have the last weight? So an invitation or the content of the message is that we must honor, we must honor God we must prioritize God and that God should have weight in our lives. And it gives us the reason. It says the reason is because the hour of his judgment has come. The hour of his judgment. You see, such judgment suggests that we are subjected to assessment. We will be assessed or we are assessed, we are evaluated. Give glory and honor him because the time of our assessment has come. The time of our evaluation has come. Look, heaven has provided salvation for us. When it is assessing us, it is assessing us on the basis of what heaven has provided and not on the basis of our own performance. Ah, what a text. Judgment has nothing to do with our performance. Judgment has all to do 
with how we treat, how heaven has treated us. Heaven has provided a way out for us. Heaven has provided a salvation to us. Salvation is not a self-help process. It's not what we can do for ourselves. But it has all to do with what heaven has done for us. And so when we are judged, judgment evaluates and assesses our attitude towards what heaven has already provided, which is salvation. And so the Bible says, worship him. Eh? It says, fear God and give him glory because the hour of judgment, you see, the focus of judgment is not on our performance, but it is based on, on the performance of heaven. Heaven has performed. How did we respond? That's why judgment has all to do with heaven and not with us. Through judgment, God is able to say, I did everything for your salvation, but you rejected it. Judgment says, you rejected salvation even as it was freely provided to you. So, the second part speaks about evaluation and it suggests that heaven will assess our attitude towards what heaven has already provided. And finally, it then says, worship him. Worship him. It is another call to worship. It is another call to prioritize God. It is another call to commit to the Lord. It is another call to come and take heaven serious. Last night we spoke about the fact that research is showing that only a small fraction of believers take spiritual disciplines such as prayer and Bible study, very serious. But now the question is, if according to this text, soon the pressures that come from the unholy trinity will be experienced by the church, how will we stand as messengers if we do not devote our personal lives, commit ourselves to heaven. We are called tonight, we are called once more that in, in spite of the fact that we are given a special message because we are a special people, but our uniqueness will not save us. It is only our total reliance on heaven that will help us. Are you devoted? Have you committed your life to Jesus? Are you a believer? Have you taken what heaven has done for you very serious? And what are you doing about it? Tonight, I want to invite you once more. If as you evaluate your own life against what heaven has already provided for your salvation and you find yourself wanting, I want to inform you tonight that there is still time. You may still take that decision. 
you may still make that choice of prioritizing your spiritual life, of feeding on the word of God, of communicating with heaven and living a devotional life. If it is your prayer, I want you to take a stand, to raise up your hand and take a stand as we pray together. Let us pray. Gracious, kind and loving Father, what a savior, what a redeemer that went out of his way to find wayward beings like ourselves. What a savior that took a decision to save us even though he would gain nothing by saving us. Tonight, we feel honored and respected by heaven. And with a heart full of gratitude, we want to thank you for what you have done and what you are doing in our lives. And so at your invitation, Lord, we come. We surrender our lives into your hands and we pray that you may take a center stage in our lives. Be our God as we are your children. In your name and for your sake, we do humbly pray. Amen.